So the example we're going to look at now is in my EX22 project in the Java 8 folder in my live lessons GitHub repository. And this particular example is going to show how to reduce and multiply big fractions using a whole slew of different programming models that are provided by Java's fork join framework. So this will give you a good idea of how the fork join framework works at a high level. And then you'll also get a chance to see different ways to program it because there's a bunch of different ways to do it. So let's take a look at how this works. So we're going to create a bunch of big fractions. We'll randomly create them. We could set to whatever value we want, set it to 100 just for kicks. And we're going to randomly generate these big fractions. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply them by this gigantic big reduced fraction. So here's a very large big reduced fraction with a large numerator and a large denominator. And we're going to multiply each of the randomly generated fractions by that one. And it'll take a while to do. So this is something that lends itself nicely to running in parallel. And uh, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to generate a list of random unreduced big fractions. So let's take a look at how we do that. So we use our make big fraction factory method, which as you can see here, generates a ginormous numerator with 150,000 bits of resolution, and then a much smaller denominator. And then we go ahead and make ourselves a big fraction with that numerator and denominator, and we do not reduce it. So it starts out unreduced. So one of the things we're going to do is reduce it. Um, we limit ourselves to S max fractions of these. Notice this uses the generate method, which is a factor method in Java Streams framework that'll just call this lambda expression, this make big fraction lambda, over and over and over again forever, but we limit ourselves to basically 100 of these things. And we collect all the results into a, uh, an array list. So we have a list of random big fractions that are unreduced. The next thing we do is we go ahead and define a function that will take a big fraction that's unreduced, reduce it, and then multiply it by this big reduced fraction that we looked at earlier. That's just an op. We're going to use that to, to do the processing. And then just for kicks, we're going to make ourselves a list of by functions that take a list of big fractions, an operation to run, which is this, this thing up here, this op, which is a function, and void. We'll talk about why it says void later. It's the return type because there's no value coming back. And then we make ourselves a list of these things, and we pass in all the different test methods we're going to look at. So we have six test methods here, and you can see the order in which we apply them. And uh, then what we're going to do once we've done this is we're going to, to run each of those uh, test methods. And we do that by using the for each algorithm. And for each test method, we're going to apply it because it's a by function passing in the fraction list that we generated randomly and that op we looked at to go ahead and apply the op to all the random big fractions to do, multi do reductions and multiplications. And when we're all done, we print the results of all the tests and we finish things off. OK, so that's, that's kind of the high level view. Let's now take a look at a few of the other things. These are all just it's basically little wrapper methods that encapsulate the fork join pool processing logic and time each of the different programming models working with the underlying fork join framework approaches. And we, we, throw in, uh, we throw in parallel streams for good measure just to see how that does as well. So they're all pretty much the same thing. When we call one of these methods, we garbage collect first so we can start out the test in a pristine state with all the memory available. Then we make ourselves a new fork join pool using the try with resources block to enable auto close, which means when the block is done, this auto close will be called and it'll free up the fork join pool automatically. And then we go ahead and we do a call. So in this case, we're going to call apply all iter, passing in the fraction list in the op and the fork join pool instance we created here. And we say what 
particular test we're running. So this can come out later when we print the results. And then the other thing we do here is we print the steel count. And this is important. When we start looking at the results, you'll see that different tests get different results with respect to the number of steels that are done by the underlying fork join pool, common fork join pool, and the worker threads therein. And so some of the mechanisms that do fewer steals tend to perform better because they're not spending all their time stealing, but they're spending time doing computation. We'll talk about that. So there's a whole bunch of different programming models we're going to look at, and, and all these little test utility methods are all pretty much the same with a few minor variations, depending on some things we'll look at when we look at the implementations, but they're all pretty much the same. Um, the final one here is the one that uses the parallel streams model, and that prints out the fork join pool, uh, common pool here, and uh, I guess it's kind of yelling and saying we should be using the try with the resources statement, but that's probably not the thing we need to do here because we're not going to be trying to delete the common fork join pool at this point. So there's no sense in using it with try with resources. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the results from running all these tests. And I ran these before because it's in my experience, if I try to run them while the Zoom session is on, it perturbs the results a bit. But these are the results and we're gonna then talk about and look at the code for each of the different tests and see why they perform differently. So you can see each of these tests has different numbers of steals. The uh, invoke all has a very high steal count. The apply all iter has a very high steal count. Remember there's a hundred, there's a hundred elements that we're going to be doing processing on. And so with apply all iter, there's 101 steals. And you'll see when we look at the code, why there's so many steals. Some of these other approaches are more of a divide and conquer like approach. And you can see that they have many fewer steals the smallest number of steals is apply all split index EX, and we'll see that one in a minute. And you'll also notice that the parallel stream version has a very low number of steals as well. The implementation of parallel streams is done in a clever way to avoid unnecessary stealing. And then when we print the results, what you find here is, that in general, not 100%, the methods that, the mechanisms that use fewer steals have better performance. And you can see that this one, for example, test apply all split index EX, which we'll look at here in a minute. That executes the best and test invoke all executes the worst, but even the worst isn't horribly slower. It's, um, you know, it's about, I guess, about a half a second slower <laughs> because it's, uh, it's basically five, you know, 5.4 seconds is the best and 6.1 or 6.2 seconds is the worst. So it's, it's not wildly different, but uh, there is a slight difference. And uh, when we look at the implementation here in a minute, you'll be able to decide whether the extra complexity of the programming approaches is worth the subtle speed up in performance. So that's the end of the first part of this. Now what we're gonna do is in the second part is we're gonna take a look in detail at the different mechanisms and the different programming models to do the fork join pool programming.